When getting started with Photon 3.0, the first thing we want to do is ensure that it is set up and running correctly. To do this, we'll begin by going to the Exit Games website and either signing up for a new account or signing into an already existing account. From there, go to the download link and under the Photon V3 heading, we have the server SDK, which is available in a 7-zip format or a self-extracting executable, as well as our 100 concurrent user free license. Go ahead and download one of the server SDKs, as well as the free license. I've already done this, and I'm going to go ahead and double-click and run the executable. From there, it'll prompt me for where I want to extract Photon. I like to put it on the root of my C drive in a directory called Photon. As of Photon 3.0, your applications do not need to be inside the Photon directory. There is now a configuration setting that you can make to let Photon know where your applications are so that it can pick them up and begin using them from there. Once it's extracted, go ahead and open up the directory, and inside you'll notice a deploy directory. In the deploy directory, is a directory for all the tools, which includes the dashboard and test client utilities, as well as a Windows 7 and Vista 32-bit, a Windows 32-bit XP, a Windows 7 and Vista 64-bit, and a Windows XP 64-bit folder. They've gone to great lengths to increase the speed of the Photon control, especially for the 64-bit versions. In this tutorial, we're going to work with the 32-bit version. Once you're inside that folder, go ahead and run the Photon Control, accept the UAC when it pops up, and you'll notice down in the bottom right that it says we have no Photon license and that we're currently limited to 20 concurrent users. Another feature with Photon 3.0 is you no longer need to accept have a firewall exception. It'll automatically do it the first time you run it. From there, we'll go ahead and right-click on the Photon Control icon and go ahead and start the default instance as an application. From there you'll see a log folder show up in the 32-bit Windows directory and when you go to the uh, taskbar you'll see that the Photon control now has a blue ring and when you hover over it it tells you that Photon is running. If we right click again we can go ahead and run the test client which will create five games of three users each. Once that's done, go ahead and hit enter, which will close out each of the clients and stop all the games. <clears throat> From there, we'll go ahead and right click again on the uh, default application. Go ahead and stop the application. And then exit out of the uh, Photon Control. Go back to where you downloaded Photon, make a copy of your license, and go ahead and paste that into the Photon directory, in the Windows 32-bit binary directory, and then restart the Photon control again. This time, you will notice that there is no pop-up talking about the lack of license, and if you right-click and go up to the license info, you can see that you now have the ability to have up to 100 concurrent users. This is great for starting an alpha test or running with a limited number of users, and you can quickly proof uh, your application holding many more users than just the default uh, 100 or default 20 users with no license file. From there, we'll go ahead and open up the log file. And you'll see there is bear trail. And if you notice, when we started up the default application, first it sets up a bunch of default preferences. And then you'll notice that it starts up the light application. It starts up the light lobby application, the MMO demo, the counter publisher, which is a way of getting some statistics back from your application, such as the number of users currently connected, the number of rooms that are open, as well as the policy application, which is, allows Silverlight and Unity clients to connect to Photon. And then you'll see messages, uh, you'll see that the server starts up and that it has then shut down from earlier.
With that, we have Photon Control or Photon 3.0 up and running, and we're good to go.